Hey, my name is Igor. I am the head of product management in Kotlin. Today, I want to talk about Kotlin community and its incredible power. I joined the team about uh, a year ago, and I'm still amazed by it all. In particular, I've been amazed at how the development of the language is influenced so much by its users. One of my favorite stories is about how the support for generics appeared in our Objective-C interop. Last April, Kevin Galligan sent in a huge pull request which added support for generics in Kotlin Native. We didn't immediately include it in the release at the time, though we left the option of enabling it with a flag. As it turns out, though, the community loved the feature, so in 1.4 M1, we officially released it. When I was preparing for this talk, I realized that Kevin is the best person to tell us about his contribution story. So the question is, why do we contribute to Kotlin? Um, at TouchLab, you know, we're doing a fair bit of work with Square to uh, improve the Kotlin multi-platform ecosystem. And one of the first things we talked about was Kotlin, Swift, and Objective-C all have generics in their language, but you can't get uh, the generics output when you make a Kotlin uh, into an Xcode framework. So uh, I reached out to the native team. We discussed the issues primarily, you know, they're very different languages, so, so there's going to be some problems uh, implementing generics, but we went ahead anyway, put it in as an experimental flag, and then people liked it enough that recently it became uh, a default option. So now you get generics in your output. So we as an org spend a lot of time working in the field with companies actually doing stuff in production. And that gives us kind of a unique perspective and very quick feedback that we're able to contribute. And ultimately our goal is to make this platform as, as huge because that's we're, we're basing our business around it. And that's, you know, so that's why we're contributing back to the platform. And Kevin is not the only one who makes the Kotlin ecosystem huge. The community has been Kotlin's main driving force from the very beginning. At Hunted, that is the number of pull requests made by Toshiaki Kamiyama, our most active GitHub contributor. And that's a hell of a lot of pull requests. Every week, he fixes a few more bugs than people from the community have reported and improves the lives of thousands of people by doing so. But making pull requests isn't the only way to contribute to Kotlin. Users can also actively help us to improve the quality of Kotlin by submitting feedback and bug reports. For example, here are the top five bug report authors in our UTEC issue tagger since 1.3 release. Thanks to them, we've caught and fixed a huge number of issues. My personal focus in our team is to make Kotlin shine on the platforms you work with it. I want your developer experience to be great while using Kotlin. I am a developer myself, like literally anyone in Kotlin team, so I know that there are some challenges that no one can solve besides you. And this is where I desperately need your help. So today we will talk about how you can contribute to Kotlin, help the ecosystem, and solve your own challenges. I think that those of you who have been working with Kotlin for a long time have all faced situations where new features, say in Objective-C, interop, are not working as you might expect. Just imagine, you update to a new version of Kotlin, but instead of enjoying performance improvements or playing with the shiny new features, you spend a lot of time setting dirty hacks to fit your specific scenario. I'm sure that it can be very annoying. I know that feeling. All the features that we make go through detailed analysis at design meetings, are tested on non user scenarios, and are discussed with the community. But each project is unique in its own way, which means that we may miss some cases that are crucial for you. The best way to avoid this is to give your feedback to our team as early as possible. To make it easier for you to do so, we release early access preview versions of Kotlin called EAPs. This allows you to install it, tie it in your own project, look out for bugs, and report them to our team. One recent example is a problem found by Jake Walton in 1.3.60. When he found out that there would be many changes related to Cupt in the next release, he decided to run a set of tests on his project which uses Cupt heavily. As a result, he discovered that the changes caused that build to hang for an indefinite period of time. The problem was quickly reproduced and explored by our technical support team. They found out that the bug appeared because of the new type inference system and was specific for very large maps. 
The problem was fixed in just three days, which is, you know, pretty fast for a programming language. And the next Kotlin release was working correctly. It is very easy to install AAP versions. In your IDE, just go to Tools, Kotlin, configure Kotlin plugin updates, and select a proper update channel type. And from now on, all of uni features will use Kotlin AAP versions. If you want to use AAPs in an existing project, you should also modify your Gradle files. We have described the algorithm on a special page, so feel free to check it out. It is available in the description of the video. If you encounter any bugs or other problems in an AAP, post them to our UTAC issue tracker. All the new tickets are carefully reviewed by our technical support team. They will reproduce the problem, ask you for additional information if needed, reduce it to its essence, and pass it on to our development team. We try to fix bugs in AAP versions as quickly as possible, because at this stage, changes in the code base are all still relatively easy for us to implement. If you want to simplify migrating to new versions of Kotlin, use EAPs. It's that simple. But I also want to share with you another life hack that gives you the opportunity to influence the language's priorities at an early stage. Each of you has unique experiences from developing your own projects with disparate trials and challenges. And your experience is very different from what our team has. The job of a product manager is to learn about your experience and take it into account when designing and prioritizing new features and plans. User interviews help us learn this information, and that's how they work. Someone from the product team calls you and asks a number of questions about your development experience, your approach to solving work tasks, and the specific details of your projects. The result of these interviews is a list of insights about, about your pains and needs and sometimes even a cool case study that we can share on our social media channels. Let's look at an example. Recently, we conducted a series of interviews with developers that are working on large Kotlin GVM projects. Many of them still have a relatively huge Java code base. We've learned a lot of interesting things from these 30 interviews particularly about how development productivity is affected by the quality of some IDE refactoring features in a multi-language environment. For example, inline and change signature refactorings. This knowledge led us to increase the priority of improving these refactorings and moving them up on the roadmap. Your experience is important to us. If you are interested in sharing it with us, please, Leave your contact information in the form by clicking on the link in the description of the video. When the time comes to investigate a problem relevant to you, we'll get in touch and conduct an interview. The more experience you gain, the more unique problem-solving knowledge you have at your disposal. Which library to choose for working with WebSockets in Android? How to properly organize bulk requests in Spring? What part of the code base to move in the actual declaration in Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile? At some point or another, you may have had the desire to share this experience and knowledge you've gained with the community to help other people with similar problems. Let's see how developers usually solve their challenges at the moment. When a developer faces a problem, they usually start looking for a solution directly in the tool or in the code base. If the IDE or compiler doesn't offer any suggestions, the developer goes to Google, where they end up either in the documentation or in some third-party content, for example, in Dev.2 articles or maybe on Stack Overflow. If they can't find the answer there, they proceed to the next level and ask questions in the community channels, for example, in Slack or in Telegram or somewhere else. If no one from the community can help, our support team come in dive deep into the problem, advise a workaround, and pass the problem on to the development team. At the second and third stages of this process, most developers start to look for help on Stack Overflow. So, when you want to act on your desire to help other members of the community, the most effective way is just to go there. By answering questions on Stack Overflow, you help not only the original author, but also all the people who will open this page afterwards, and there are lots of them. 
I'm very glad that we already have so many active contributors on Stack Overflow. Here is just a few of them. They are awesome. But there are still a lot of areas where you can help with, where you can share your knowledge. 36% of Stack Overflow questions are not marked as solved, and 20% have no answers at all. So head over to Stack Overflow, select the text that reflect your experience, like Kotlin, Spring, GPA, or maybe multi-platform, uh, and help other people benefit from your expertise by giving them helpful answers. It is really cool to be a programmer. Unlike many other engineering professions, we can increase our productivity not just by using professional tools, but by improving them ourselves. There is a famous Boy Scout rule, leave your code better than how you found it. The same approach can be applied to a work environment, leave your tools better than how you found them. These contributions may vary in complexity, from sharing new usage statistics to developing new libraries or creating a video course. Each contribution makes your tooling and community better, which in turn helps future you. It is very easy to cross off the first item on this checklist. Let's see together how to do it. About 8% of Kotlin developers share anonymous usage statistics with our team. Increasing this number is very important for us, as it helps us make more correct product decisions. Let's return to the topic of tooling quality in mixed Kotlin Java code. There are lots of various refactoring features and ideas, so it's not completely obvious where to start. We answered this question with the help of feature usage analytics, which showed us the frequency with which developers perform actions. We combined this data with our knowledge of specific problems and their importance. And as a result, we were able to create a good, balanced list of priorities. To help us improve the accuracy of our priorities list, just follow a couple of simple steps. It should take no more than 20 seconds of your time. So just put the video on pause, open idea, go to settings, appearance and behavior, system settings, data sharing, and click the checkbox there. Done? OK, well, maybe we can't call something that requires four clicks easy, but I believe that you were able to handle it. Thanks. And that's it. And I hope that after it, you'll cross off other items from this list as well. When we started working on Kotlin, our main goal was to create a tool that would increase JetBrains' own productivity and enable it to make its products more efficiently than with Java. Kotlin's development process was open source even before the official release, and we got lots of feedback from outside the company. This included feedback from Android developers, who tried Kotlin but struggled with the fact that it didn't work on their projects. We iterated on that feedback, fixed some of the problems, and made sure that Kotlin worked for them as well. And the community saw this. They started to use Kotlin for their tasks. They migrated their unit tests to Kotlin, as well as individual product features and even entire applications. I also worked in a mobile development team that adopted Kotlin even before its official release. And I saw how much better our developer experience was because of it. Besides apps, the community started to create lots of useful Kotlin content, from inspiring blog posts to video tutorials. Gradually, the folks at Google started to receive more and more questions from the community. When will we support Kotlin officially? How can I use Kotlin in production? Look how great Kotlin is and many more. The number of questions coming from the community and Kotlin's adoption in the industry both got to such a level that Google decided to add Kotlin to the list of officially supported Android languages. But there was more. The community began to develop so actively that in the first year after the announcement, the number of professional developers on Kotlin increased sixfold. And another year later, Google officially recommended the Kotlin first approach for Android application development. And it's all thanks to you, the developers. My role on the team is to listen to our users, learn about their usage scenarios and pains that are important, and help to make the developer experience great. I am committed to this, so feel free to save this email, which I check out daily. 
If you ever want to complain about something or tell me your story, but you don't want to use our other feedback channels, I will be happy to handle the request myself. The evolution of Kotlin would be impossible without community participation and feedback. You are what made Kotlin first the preferred language for Android development and now the general purpose solution for so many platforms. I am looking forward to seeing what wonderful things we can do next together. Stay in touch and have a nice Kotlin.